Hello, my name is Charlie Moran. I'm a senior analyst here at Value Line. I'm joined today by two other senior analysts, Sharif Abdu and Alan House. We here at Value Line hope you and your family are staying safe and dealing with this difficult time as best as possible during the holidays. Today, we're going to provide an update on the coronavirus and its ongoing impact on the economy and stock market. We will also discuss the actions Value Line is taking to help our subscribers navigate this difficult time. We will then recommend one stock to buy right now and finally answer any questions you may have. Please note that this presentation will be available on our website, www.valueline.com, and on our YouTube channel within the next 48 hours. All previous webinars are also posted. Before I jump into the heart of the presentation, for those joining us for the first time, I want to provide a brief overview of who we are at ValueLine. We are a New York headquartered corporation that has been providing investment research for more than 85 years. Our flagship product is the ValueLine Investment Survey. This service is a unique source of financial information and is designed to help investors make informed investment decisions that fit their individual goals and levels of risk. The product includes data, information, and analysis on more than 1,700 equities that trade on the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, and the Toronto Stock Exchange. It also includes economic commentary, easy-to-follow model portfolios, stock screens, industry-based analysis, and much more. This service, which is published weekly, is created by Value Line's research department, which is comprised of more than 70 analysts, economists, data experts, and quantitative specialists. One thing I want to stress is that our research is completely unbiased and independent. Unlike many Wall Street brokerage firms, Value Line has no investment banking business with any company, including the 1,700 that are included in this service. ValueLine does not execute trades for its subscribers and therefore has no vested interest in whether or our subscribers buy, sell, or hold a specific equity. What's more, our staff of professional securities analysts are not permitted to own any shares of any company that they cover. If you have any questions about the products or services we offer or our different tiers of, of subscriptions, that, that information can be found at ValueLine.com or you can call 1-800-ValueLine. Now let's discuss the coronavirus, the economy, and the stock market. This content was prepared by Harvey Katz, ValueLine's chief economist. The tug of war between the bulls and the bears remains intense as the year end approaches with stocks gaining and losing considerable sums on almost a daily basis. Behind those wide swings, our worries about the COVID-19 variant Omicron, which is making its way across the United States. Fears that the Federal Reserve will soon take a less accommodative monetary stance and lingering concerns about inflation and uneasiness regarding a slowdown in job creation during November. On the other hand, manufacturing activity and, non and the non-manufacturing sector Still are doing well, and there are expectations that vaccines will offer protection against the variant that some now contend will prove less severe than first feared. Meanwhile, COVID-19 concerns have yet to abate on a sustained basis. To recap, last spring saw cases decline only to have them rebound over the summer as the infectious Delta variant surfaced in a big way. Then after another dip in infections in early autumn, Colder weather and the Omicron variant now are rattling health authorities, governments, and the financial markets. A bigger worry, though, is the Fed. Heretofore, the assumption had been that the bank would reduce its bond buying at a measured pace so as not to slow the business upturn. Now, yesterday, comments by Fed uh, Chairman Jerome Powell suggest growing fears about inflation thus opening the door to a possible hike in the federal funds interest rate by mid-2022. Concerns about a potential shift shook the markets after Thanksgiving. We think the elevated market volatility will last for weeks, most likely because the outlook for the Fed, the Omicron virus, and the economy, including inflation, may remain up in the air for a while. 
The fact that stocks have been priced for near perfection before the likely revision in Fed thinking only increases the uneasiness among investors. Conclusion, these are certain uncertain times, and to be sure, and the danger of event risk is rising. In such times, sudden and poorly thought out investment moves can be pr- counterproductive. To paraphrase Harvey, it has long been Value Line's perspective that equities should be a core component of a well-rounded, well-diversified portfolio. In good economic times or less favorable times, in bull markets or bear markets. On that note, Value Line is providing a great deal of information and analysis to help our subscribers. We know that most of our users depend on our weekly stock reports, time-tested ranking systems, and other valuable services. In addition, Value Line provides a great deal of daily content that can help you avoid the pitfalls and profit during this volatile time in the stock market. Every business day, senior members of Value Line's research department review the most actively traded stocks, company press releases, news stories, trade periodicals, and other sources for data and information that may change our view and investment recommendations for specific stocks. When something noteworthy crosses our desk, we immediately publish a supplementary report that outlines the new information and, importantly, what it means for the stock and shareholders. This content is posted throughout the day on our website. Again, that's www.valueline.com. I will now show you how to access it. Once signed in, head to the dashboard uh, where I am located here. Uh, This is the main landing page for subscribers. Under the quick links, click on supplementary reports. As you can see, the research department has been busy publishing our updated thoughts on the stocks that we track. We strongly suggest that subscribers visit this page often. We are also monitoring our financial strength grades. Some individual companies incurred a lot of debt or sold stock to improve liquidity this past year, especially those dealing with sharply reduced demand for their offerings and supply chain problems, among many other issues. Due to the changing structure of company balance sheets, Value Line has been reviewing and altering our proprietary financial strength grades for the stocks in our coverage universe. These changes are posted each week in our selection and opinion newsletter. For those of you that don't know, financial strength, along with price stability, another proprietary value line measure, are the two metrics that are used to calculate a stock safety rank, a key measure of risk. When considering a new stock to invest in, we strongly suggest that you utilize financial strength and safety in your division in your decision making process. For more information in regard to our proprietary ranks and ratings, ValueLine provides a user guide that can be accessed via the investment education section of our website. Lastly, this is a good time to mention that the case for individual stocks is quite strong over broad index funds. Certainly, particular industries and sectors will recover more quickly than others during and after this pandemic runs its course. Okay, now we're going to go on to the screener and our one stock to buy right now. Now let's move on to the one stock to buy right now. For this, let's go to the screener. Uh, Value Line subscribers have access to 15 preset screens in 50 fields. I should also mention that another 100 or so fields are available, but it requires a higher level of subscription. If this interests you, please call 1-800-VALUE-LINE. And we'll go through the steps right now. Today, we'll start the screening process by looking at growth rates, particularly over the longer term. And then we'll add a valuation metric as well as a balance sheet consideration. So the first uh, screen we want to look at is the earnings per share growth. And we're going to use a filter that is based on the five-year earnings growth per share Uh, We want it to be at least 20% over the past five years on on an annual basis. 
we are focusing on companies that achieved a five-year earnings per growth earnings per share growth in excess of 20 percent. Now we are going to run this screen and there are roughly 5,700 stocks in our database and we're already down to I believe 358 stocks when this is run. Uh, we've substantially narrowed down the list of candidates. Uh, we want to stay with the theme of performance, and we're going to apply another filter, this time looking at valuation. The second one is uh, a current PE ratio uh, of 75% of the market on a relative basis. Uh, we want to look for less expensive stocks, and we can do this on a relative to industry basis, or we can choose relative to the overall market. Uh, we've chosen to be conservative in terms of valuation. The market has been rewarding growth equities for quite some time, and we wanted to use the filter to find something that may not be as exposed to higher interest rates, in theory at least. Uh, the list is whittled down to approximately 150 now at last look. Um, our next screen will be for timely stocks. The third filter, that means a timeliness of one or two in our timeliness ranking system. After doing this screen, we have whittled our uh, list down to approximately 21 stocks. Lastly, the, uh, the fourth filter will be uh, uh, looking at financial strength, and we want a financial strength rating of at least A. Uh, by choosing a stock with a high financial strength of at least A, we can further narrow down the candidates. There are nine measures of financial strength. Uh, the highest is A++, and the ratings go down incrementally in descending order to, not, uh, to C. Uh, the, final, the financial strength and price stability make up the stock safety rank. Uh, so there you have the list of the final five candidates, and you can certainly make an argument for any of our remaining stocks, and investors interested in adding new positions should consider them. However, only one can be today's one stock to buy right now, and after consulting with a number of my senior analysts, we prefer and recommend AbbVie. Ticker symbol is ABBV. Uh, before I click on AbbVie, please note that screens can be saved and revisited by utilizing the Create Saved Screen button at the top. Now let's uh, now click on AbbVie and get some additional information from ValueLine's digital report. AbbVie is a, uh, a biopharmaceutical company focused primarily on immunology and hematologic oncology therapies among many different fields. The company is still integrating its spring 2020 acquisition of Allergan, which provided more stable cash flow products, including the Botox franchise. Uh, Botox should be a larger contributor as social activity returns to more normal levels as the COVID-19 pandemic wanes. The stock always trades at a discount to the market, but its low valuation reflects concerns over its primary drug, Umira, which accounts for about a third of revenue. Uh, this percentage has declined since overseas competition started in 2018. It is scheduled to lose its U.S. patent in 2023, but we do not believe that its contribution will immediately be lost entirely. Other drugs, in fact, within the portfolio should also pick up the slack, including Rinvoq and Skerizi, which are seeing expanding usage in various immunology fields. The stock is now trading at about 132 Price per share, as one can see in the banner section. Now let's take a look at our last full page report, which was published in October. As you can see in the statistical array, or the center of the report that includes the financial data, after a flat earnings year due to the pandemic, we expect share earnings for AbbVie to advance at a solid clip in 2022, as recently guided to 
by management. We also look for continued improvement in the operating margin thanks to synergies from last year's acquisition. The operating margin is slated to rise 100 basis points to 51% as seen in the array. You can see that in the 2021 to 2022 column where the operating margin row is. Uh, one of the best attributes is the relative P-E ratio. Uh, the relative P-E ratio looks low on a historic basis, as you can see in the middle of the array. Uh, it's low relative to its history, and it's normally low, which I think provides a measure of safety for the stock. And the dividend yield is generous and well covered, as one can see by the 40% number uh, the all dividends to net profits bottom row in the in the array uh, again that suggests to us that there is a margin of safety with regard to the dividend payout which is pretty generous uh, at about 4.9 percent uh, the metrics are also solid safety rank is three the timeliness rank is two financial strength is a and the earnings predictability is perfect at 100. All told, we think that AbbVie's position is quite strong and the stock can form one of the building blocks of a successful portfolio. It is today's one stock to buy right now. I will now tackle your questions. Please note that I typically can't answer complex questions about specific stocks on the spot. For this, I recommend a review of our latest reports. The first few were submitted prior to this presentation, and uh, now I'll hand it off to Alan and Sharif. Hi, uh, this is Alan. Um, Charlie, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, we got a lot of good questions here. I'll, uh, I'll tackle the first one. Um, the first one had to do with um, the 18-month uh, price, and as you could see, uh, the 18-month uh, price appreciation price appreciation potential for Avi is 40 percent. Uh, that's like uh, like the timeliness rank. Um, that's not calculated by the analyst. That's calculated by our quantitative uh, uh, department, um, and that's a measure of it's an intermediate measure of how the stock's going to perform over the 18 months ahead. So we have our timeliness rank, which focuses on the six to 12 month time horizon. And then we have the, um, you know, the three to five year price appreciation potential. But we realize that there are subscribers and investors that would like to look at a more intermediate term holding, and that's why we have instituted the 18 month target price range. You know, and as you can see, as you know, I noted before that we have a midpoint of $147 uh, for that stock. Um, so there is, you know, still even though the stock has increased since our, you know, October report, uh, there still is some room to run over that span. So I just wanted to touch upon that. Uh, we also had another question um, regarding uh, the safety of the stock in the current environment, and that's that's a very good question. As Charlie alluded to, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things going on right now. There's, you know, the the you know, the coronavirus is still um, quite active, especially with all the variants. Um, you know, the Federal Reserve uh, is most likely to, to raise rates uh, next year, which is also concerned. There's inflationary pressures. Um, there's some uncertainty regarding the job market. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. But, you know, as Charlie alluded to, there are some, some good metrics for, for AVI uh, as being a safe holding. Um, you know, the biopharmaceutical industry in general, I'm speaking in general, is generally probably one of the more volatile industries under our coverage. And so when you look at this company specifically, it's got an earnings predictability of 100 and a stock price stability of 75. And that's also on a scale of 1 to, one, one to 100. So that's pretty good um, just on, a, on an absolute basis. But when you dissect it further and look at the biopharm industry, that's an extremely good, uh, you know, good metrics to look at. You know, it's, it's, very, it's very favorable. Um, and also the safety rank is a three, but that's, that's matched against the whole value line universe. That's not just for the biopharm industry. So, and, you know, one other thing is the beta coefficient 
is 1.00, which is which is you know right on with the overall market. And and again, for a biofarm company, that's that's pretty good. So, you know, we we understand people's concerns about the you know the current market and and what stocks are going to be quote unquote safer investments. And um, based on these you know fundamentals, we believe Avi uh, is a is a safer choice. There's no safe choice in this market, but is one of the safer choices. Thank you, Alan. Uh, this is Sharif. Uh, I just wanted to touch on one question that we received. Uh, the, the question was presented by uh, Mr. John Bustard. His question is, I have taught myself how to get a list of stocks using the screener tool. Uh, where he has an issue is that uh, he wants to go back and look at the details of an individual stock, but then return back to the list. Now, unfortunately, there is uh, no way to do that, unfortunately. Um, so right now you see that we had our list nar narrowed down to five finalists, and then from that we selected AbbVie. Um, so the, the best advice I can give you if that is what you want to do, if you want to uh, use the screener, narrow down your list, and then uh, you choose to return back to the list after looking at one individual stock. The best thing you can do is to save your screen. So let me show you how to do that right now. Uh, so we'll go to the screener, and we're just going to go ahead and apply the same exact metrics that we just used, okay? So the first thing we did, we really looked at the growth rates. Uh, Charlie looked at the uh, earnings per share growth rate for five years. Uh, and we used the lower bracket at uh, 20%. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that again. So I'm just going to drag that up. Let me drag it down just a little bit to get it right to 20%. Okay, we're close enough. All right, so I'm going to apply the filter, and you can see that we've, again, narrowed the list down to 338, yada, yada. So now the next step would be that uh, we look at the, again, we were using the price-to-earnings ratio, and this, uh, in this specific instance, we're looking at the relative uh, price-to-earnings. Uh, and we're looking at 75% relative to the broader market. So let's go ahead and apply that. Okay, we got it down to 140. Wonderful. Now we're going to look at the timeliness. And uh, we chose uh, timeliness of one or two. And we got it down to 21. Wonderful. So now we're going to look at, uh, we're going to apply one final screening criteria. We looked at the financial strength. And we chose stocks with a financial strength of A or better. So that would include A, A plus, or A++. And again, we got it down to five. So basically, we applied the exact same uh, criteria that Charlie just presented, and we got down to the same list of five finalists. So the best thing you can do right now, unfortunately, there is no way to choose ABV and then go back and look at the five finalists again. The best way to do that is to save this screen. So you're going to go ahead and click up here, create, save screen, and you can name it, you know, however you want to name it. Usually what I do when I apply a screen, I will use the date. Excuse me. Um, and um, I'll, I'll use a name that uh, will immediately jog my memory as far as what the screen was, uh, was, was looking at. So I'll use rel, pe, uh, and timely. Okay and I'll click Save. So the nice thing about this is you can return to this list. You can return, uh, excuse me, you can return to this list of criteria at any point. The funny thing is that if you return a week from now, let's say, you might apply this exact same criteria, but the list may have changed because, you know, the market obviously is very fluid. Um, so. Let's go ahead and open one of our saved screens. And it's going to go ahead and apply, automatically apply all those same criteria that we had just used. The nice thing about using this method is it allows you to have 
a, a set of criteria or guidelines that you find very important, that you as an individual find very, that this is exactly what you want to emphasize, whether that's financial strength, safety, growth rates, historical growth, um, if you want to emphasize something like dividend or dividend yield, um, uh, it, it, it will depend very much on your individual criteria. That's the nice thing. You can, you can apply this criteria and then you can return to it at any point in the future. Uh, so that is my advice. If you want to look at the, the finalists here, you're going to have to create a safe screen. Okay, I'm going to hand it off to Alan. Uh, thank you, Sharifa. That was very informative. And uh, yeah, the another question that, that came up, which I thought was pretty interesting, uh, what someone said about the high debt level of the company. And, and you know, it's it's tough to compare apples to apples on, on companies within a value line universe. Some some industries, uh, you know, you know, I was I was always under the impression that thirty five percent debt to equity ratio was average, uh, which may or may not be the case anymore, but you know, it sounds like a pretty fair number. Um, there's some industries, you know, with, with, you know, where most companies have no debt or maybe five to 10% debt. There's other comp you know, there's other industries where there's a substantial amount of debt. And, you know, biopharm is, is one of those industries that, that is pretty highly leveraged. Um, you know, a lot of it depends on bringing successful new products to the market, R and D and all that other good stuff. So even though this, company has an 86 percent uh debt to total capital ratio now um you know we're not overly concerned with that because of the fact that you know the company is very profitable it's it's creating a lot of cash flow and it's in, you know which enables it to uh you know to spur its new product pipeline so um so you know like i said a lot of things can't be looked at an apples apples basis they have to kind of be looked at within their own industry or in, or at sometimes within their own, uh, you know, within their own company. And and for instance, uh, with this company, Avvi, they just closed on a major acquisition last year. Um, so they, you know, not only are they digesting that, but there might be some financial overhang regard related to that regarding their debt. So there's a lot of factors to look at rather than just you know looking at it and saying, oh wow, they have 85, 90 percent debt. You got to ask yourself or or analyze why that debt's there and what's, you know, if it's being utilized, it's being leveraged for, you know, to, for profits, you know, to, to boost profits. So, um, so thank you. Okay, we have another question here. This question might seem, um, uh, what, what's the right word? Maybe it might seem uh, rudimentary, but I think it's actually a very important question to address. Uh, the person asked, can you explain how you estimate the target price range? Is that the result of a mathematical formula or is there something else? So let's take AbbVie as an example. So the target price range, here it is. This is our three to five year target price range. I'm assuming that is what the, uh, that's what the question was addressing was the three to five year target price range, okay? And we have a high of 180, a low of 120. You can see that right there. So how do we arrive at that number? So the value line convention is that we look at the three to five year earnings per share. So earnings per share in the year 2024 to 2026. For AbbVie, that's $13.15 per share. We then multiply that 1350 by the average annual PE ratio three to five years out. For AbbVie, that is 11, okay? So if we multiply 1350 by 11, we arrive at 148.5, okay? We have multiplied this earnings per share number, 1350, by the average annual PE ratio of 11, and we arrive at a 148.5. So how do we get from 148.5 to 180, 120? How do we get from 148 to these two numbers here? So the next number we're gonna use is the safety rank, okay? That number of 148.5 gives us the midpoint. And then based on the safety of the company, it sort of gives us an idea of how confident are we in the company's future earnings, okay? 
it's just a it, it, it's it's a nice round number to, to to guide us as far as how confident are we uh, in the company's future earnings. So AbbVie has a safety rank of three. So it's about average. That's an average safety rank. Um, so we're going to apply a multiple of 1.2. Okay. So a company with a safety rank of let's say a company that happened to have a safety rank of two, we would apply a multiple of 1.15. A company with a safety rank of one, we would apply a multiple of 1.1. AbbVie happens to be a three, so we're gonna apply a, safe, a, a, a multiple of 1.2. So we're gonna take the 148.5 times 1.2, and that gives us 178.20. And uh, we round that up to 180. So how that explains the 180, but how do we get uh, at the, to the 120? How do we arrive at that number? So now we're going to divide the 178.2 by 1.2, and that gets us back to our midpoint, 148.5. Now we're going to multiply that by a factor of 0.8, right? To get the upper bracket of our TPR, or target price range, we applied a multiple of 1.2. To get to the lower bracket, we're going to apply a multiple of 0.8. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. Um, now, if you do apply that, uh, that multiple of 0.8 to our midpoint of 148.5, we now arrive at $118.80. Again, we round that up to 120. Okay. So just to recap, we multiply our three to five year earnings per share target, in this case 13.5, by our three to five year average annual PE ratio, in this case 11. That gives us our midpoint. In this case, it's 148.5. And then based on our safety rank, we're gonna apply a multiple. <coughs> Excuse me. To get to the upper bracket, we use a multiple of 1.2 because it's a company has a safety rank of, of three. Uh, and then to get to the lower bracket, we apply a safety rank, uh, we apply a multiple, excuse me, of 0.8, and that gets us to 120. And uh, I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, question uh, is answered. I hope I didn't confuse people too much with that uh, explanation. Alan, uh, do you wanna take a question? Yeah, thank you, Sharif. Um, the next question, um, I saw was, please explain the earnings predictability. What is your average earnings predictability of all stocks in the S&P 500? Um, I just want to address that question because actually the earnings predictability is based not on the S&P 500. It is based on the 1,700 stocks in the value line arithmetic index. So uh, when when you see what uh, AVI, the, you know, the earnings predictability is, that is against the 1,700 stocks in the value line universe, not the S&P 500. Um, at the best of my knowledge, we don't have, you know, we don't calculate for the S&P 500, we do it based only on our on our universe. So I just want to to address that question. Um, and there was um, one other good question. Uh, you know, they, uh, some, some, someone asked why we picked Avi, I'm sorry, uh, why we picked Avi out of those five stocks. Um, you know, why do we pick Avi rather than one of the other four stocks? I guess you could rephrase that as, and, you know, that's a very good question. Um, as you know, Sharif alluded to, and Charlie alluded to, um, you know, we go, you know, we go through several screens to, to narrow it down to, you know, four, four to six stocks generally. Uh, then we do our one stock to buy right now. And we, you know, we, analyze the situation, we analyze the stocks, all the stocks, we consult with the analysts responsible, you know, for those stocks. And then we discuss it amongst ourselves and with other senior analysts. Um, you know, we, we believe, you know, based on those screens that most of those are very good companies, but, you know, this is all about the one stock to buy right now. And so it is, it is a process and it is, you know, we consult with other analysts um, and we, you know, we come to, you know, conclusion of what, what the best stock we feel is right now. So I, I hope that answers that question. Um, so with that, that, that includes our presentation on the one stock to buy right now. We thank you for joining us.